How do I want to live my life? What's important to me? And how can I and the people I love be as happy as possible? Those are questions that I think many of you have asked yourself. And I'm no different. However, my answers to those questions have been quite different than most people's. And that's why I'm standing on this stage today. I've created a different life and a different family than most people. Ten years ago, me and my partner Mina, we started to think about if we wanted kids or not. And during those conversations, we both agreed that if it would happen at all, we needed at least one more person to share parenthood with. And the reason? Well, we were looking at the reality around us and we saw our friends forming families the way most people do. We have lots of queer friends, so not all were heterosexual families, but nonetheless, there was this clear pattern that our friends got kids, and then we didn't see them for a very long time. And when we talked to them, they didn't seem to be doing great at all. They were struggling in their relationships, and they were tired like super tired all the time. And they didn't have time to do anything for themselves. They spent all their time either at work or at home. Most of them hadn't been on a date with their partner for what felt like centuries. Swedish statistics speak for itself. More than half, or almost half, of all children experience their parents breaking up during their childhood. Most of them are between one to four years old when this happens. This shows that the way we structure our life, lives and our relationships isn't necessarily sustainable, and that many relationships fall apart when a kid is born. And we also saw this happening among us, with our fr friends and people around. And me and Mina, we didn't want that. We wanted to keep our relationship and our friends, and other things we valued in life. So we started to look for that special someone to become the third parent to a child. And now I have this amazing family consisting of me, my co-parents Mina and Sapphire, and our kid Rio. Rio turned six this November and is a wonderful person crazy about football, Lego, and Harry Potter. We all live together in a flat in a suburb north of Stockholm, and we feel super normal, and we do what most families do. But what is a family? Norms around families and parenthood it changes with time. Before industrialization, most people lived on farms, in groups of as many people as this farm could feed. There was no nuclear family, and people with different family ties were living together. The nuclear family came hand in hand with urbanization and industrialization, and it became the norm during the 19th century. And it is still the norm. Today, lots of families look different, but nonetheless, we structure our society and our laws around a family consisting of a mom and a dad and 1.8 kids. For me, my family are the people I've chosen to spend my everyday life with. You don't have to be in love to form a family. For me, it's about having a shared, long-term commitment to creating a good life for one another. Actually, I think it would be smarter to create parenthood with someone you're not in love with. Because love can be stormy and fragile. We all know that. Maybe the, not the best foundation for parenthood. I've chosen to live differently and to break many of the unwritten rules about how to live a good, normal life. And it's not always easy. I remember the time when Rio was newly born. It is November 2012, and Rio is lying really cute and red and wrinkly on Sapphire's chest on the bed next to mine. We have a big hospital room with three beds to accommodate our unorthodox family. I'm tired, but most of all, 
just super happy to have this little new person in my life. Still a bit shaky from the C-section, I reach for my phone to call my mother, and I say when she picks up, I have a child, you're a grandmother, come and visit. And her response, I don't think I can. A child can have only two parents, and I don't think I can handle this. She didn't see Rio until weeks later. And my mother, she wanted me to be normal. And for some reason, she thought it was very upsetting that I'm not. A few practical things have also been a little bit of a struggle like trying to get a joint bank account with three bank cards for the family, for example. Can you believe that only a couple banks even exist where this is possible? Most of the banks, mm -mm, they didn't want our money because we didn't fit into their data systems. But there are, there are solutions to most situations when breaking norms. But our nor the norms in the society also influence the laws, and that's more tricky. So by law, Rio can have only two legal parents. So if the two legal parents would die, for example, the third parent wouldn't necessarily get to adopt Rio. And if the two legal parents want to kick Rio, the third parent out of Rio's life, they can. And it leaves Rio in a very unsafe situation where Rio can suddenly lose a parent. And this can only be changed by changing the law. We see ourselves as a progressive country, but in some ways, we really aren't. It makes me furious that Sweden doesn't have laws to protect Rio and other kids in similar situations. A very common question among friends and even strangers when they hear about our family is, but how do you do it? How do you get along among the three of you when we have conflicts about everything all the time, when, even if we are only two people? When we planned our parenthood, we thought about this and how to prevent it. Because we are three adults with very strong opinions, so we needed to create a structure to avoid conflict. And being three project manager types living together, it became natural to us to create a shared online calendar where we divide the days with Rio equally. So we know exactly who will leave Rio at school, who will pick them up, and who will have the pleasure to plan the weekend with Rio. We schedule this months in advance. And the days when I'm responsible for Rio, I'm also the one doing all the decisions for Rio. And when Saf it, the calendar says Sapphire, it's Sapphires who's in charge and who decides. This means, for example, that Rio's allowed to jump in their own bed with Sapphire, but with me, mm -mm, that's a clear no-no. But I'm confident that both Mina and Sapphire have good enough skills to keep Rio both alive and healthy. And everything doesn't have to be done exactly my way. It really does help to keep arguments to a min minimum, and it's a relief not having to discuss trivialities all the time. Once a month or so, we schedule a family meeting to make bigger decisions about Rio or our life together, like what school to choose or what to do for our summer holiday. The structure with the calendar also means that the days when I don't have Rio, I can plan to do whatever I want. I can spend the night with Rio and the parent in charge, but I can also see a friend or a partner, work out, or even go for several days to Gothenburg to give a TEDx talk. A couple of months ago, I was invited to a public radio show to talk about our, our family. And afterwards, people were commenting in social media, you know, the way people do comment in social media. And some of the comments were that we are being selfish, 
that we don't care about Rio, but just about ourselves. And the truth is the very opposite. Rio is the most important person in my life. And I love them. I love being at home with them, playing, quarreling over bedtimes, or reading about the latest Gryffindor victory in Kidditch. It is wonderful. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And Rio is doing great. I've never or rarely met a child who is more confident and safe. I think a child benefits from having more than two close adults who love them and want to care for them. And I also think happier parents get happier kids. I believe all families would benefit from a shared responsibility. And for many, that requires a strict structure, like, for example, a calendar to divide the parental leave days equally. Because equality is not easy. I talked to my female friends who have kids. Many of them wanted to create an equal parenthood with their husbands or boyfriends. But anyway, they ended up somehow with the majority of the workload, feeling pretty disappointed with both themselves and their partners for letting that happen. But it is hard to break structures and patterns. And if you don't take conscious steps to break out of them, it's very, very easy to fall into them. And that's the very essence of norms. It's exhilarating to live in a time when society is changing and norms in society are evolving. And they're evolving pretty fast. A few decades ago, it was still a taboo to divorce. And children born outside of marriage were called bastards. Nowadays, a majority of all children are born outside of a marriage. Many marriages end in, ends in divorce. It's no longer a taboo. Lesbian mothers and single moms can get insemination within the healthcare system. Trans men are getting pregnant and give birth. And the queer community is expanding with more and more kids. Society is changing and things are happening, but it's still not always easy to choose how to live one's life. But it's clear, clearly so much easier today than in the 70s when I was born. In the end, the best choice for many will still be to live in a nuclear family, but I think more people will choose differently if they knew that the option even exists. I met this friend. He had listened to the radio show I was on, and he said, the program made me cry. I wish I would have heard this 10 years ago, then maybe I would be a father today. I knew that parenting with only one other person wouldn't suit me, but I didn't know that one could do it any other way. I found the way I want to live my life, and I want a future where everyone finds a way that suits them. Being aware of all the different options available, not automatically doing what everyone else does, I want a future where politicians have opened their eyes and created laws and regulations that work for all kinds of families and that protect children. I never thought I could be this happy being a parent. And I owe it all to both my co-parents and my kid and to myself for daring to think outside the box, disrupting status quo. Thank you.